this year. <clears throat> so this session will be about uh, dashboards and workspace management in Power BI. So let's get started right away. For those who don't know me, I'm Thimanthi Vidana Ramge. Um, I love working with Microsoft data platform technologies such as Microsoft Power BI, Azure Analytics Services, and Azure Data Factory. Uh, the most important thing out of all the details that you see in the screen right now uh, is my Twitter handle at Thimanthi B. So uh, please follow me on Twitter at Thimanthi B. So just a bit of recap in terms of what we have been working on and uh, during the last few sessions. Uh, so the first session was entirely about uh, how do you build a very basic data model with reference to a data source in Power BI. Uh, then the sec second session uh, was about advancing that data model with the use of Power BI data flows uh, and how we, how, um, how we should manage the data model uh, with Power BI data flows. And the third session was about uh, data visualizations in reports in Power BI, which was a very basic and simple version. And um, the fourth session was the, an advanced version of it where I covered some um, uh, advanced, a bit of advanced features that are essential uh, in uh, Power BI reporting. So those are the four sessions that we had uh during the in, during throughout this year and uh the next session the session that we'll be having today is uh, will entirely focus on uh dashboard development and also workspace management which is also essential for power bi developers or even power bi business users to know so uh, that's basically the a main goal of today, so let's get started. <clears throat> Moving into the agenda, so uh, uh, as I told you before, today we'll be discussing our dashboards and workspace management. Uh, so yeah, so let's uh, simply get started with dashboards. Moving into dashboards, uh, so uh, dashboards provide a uh, high level view of data. Uh, so, uh, simply you can say it as a summary of data. Uh, it's ideally static and there is no interaction involved in dashboards. Um, and also it's important to keep in mind that in Power BI dashboards and reports are not the same. Uh, so these are two different components in Power BI, but if you uh, look at other BI tools such as Tableau, as far as I know, uh, uh, the report itself is a dashboard, but uh, in Power BI, dashboards and reports are two different concepts. So uh, basically, reports provide you a detailed view of the data uh, uh, while allowing you visual interactions and all that. But when it comes to dashboards, it's just a high level static view of the data, uh, specifically targeted uh, for groups such as the high level management. So, uh, uh, so when I say high level management, it does not, uh, I mean, uh, it's not com it's not always used for that. It's uh, used for uh, 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 any any level of business users. Uh, it's used between any level of business users as well. Uh, but that's just an example. It's just a very high view, high level view or summarize view of your data in a very static way. Right, so that's just a bit of introduction in terms of dashboards. So uh, let's quickly get started and uh, look at a demo. Uh, look at look into uh, a demo in dashboards. Right, going ahead, ahead. So I what I would do is I would be accessing uh, the workspace that I have been working with uh, to build all these components. So um, if you are a first timer or if you are someone who is uh, looking at these training sessions for the first time, uh, kindly refer to the previous training sessions. Uh, I have developed each and every component that you see in the screen right now, which is the data model, uh, the data flow, the report and all that. 
So uh, please make sure that you refer to those sessions and get back to this session. Uh, if not, it would be uh, a bit of confusing for you guys. So uh, please do that uh, before heading into this session. Right. Um, by the saying that, uh, let's quickly see how we can create a dashboard. So this is the workspace that I've been working with um, throughout this uh, series of training sessions. So uh, how do you create a dashboard as um, you go ahead, ahead and click on uh, create, uh, you click on uh, the new icon that you see, a new option that you see right at the top of your workspace. So how you do that is simply access your workspace and on the top you would see an icon called new uh, with a plus icon, just click on that. And uh, if you scroll yourself downwards, down, uh, you should be able to see an option called dashboard, right? So just click on the dashboard option. And uh, and afterwards we'll have to provide a new for our dashboard. So in this case, I would just simply call it sales summary. So I had provided a name for my dashboard. And next I would click on the create I, uh, button that I see right at the bottom. And this would create my blank dashboard. So why is it blank? Because we haven't brought any content to this dashboard yet. So how do you bring content to this dashboard? So usually with dashboards, how do you bring in content is with reference to the reports. You refer into the spe specific report and uh, you, tell, look, you, you decide which visuals that you want to see uh, in the dashboard and you basically pin those visuals back into the dashboard, right? So you, it, with Power BI dashboards, you cannot create visuals from scratch. You have to always refer a visual that you created in uh, your Power BI reports, right? So how do you do that? Yes, uh, you basically navigate yourself into the Power BI report that you want to uh, refer to in order to create a dashboard. So that's the sales report in this case, which we developed in the um, previous two training sessions. So uh, this is my sales report. Um, so I think you can remember that uh, we created a sales overview and a sales detail view in this, a very simple report just to take you through the process in terms of how you should develop a report. So uh, these are the two pages and this is the report that we developed. So in this report, I have decided personally to that I want to have the visual sales breakdown by customer and sales breakdown by product in my dashboard, right? So what I do, is um, I just go and hover over the specific visual, in this case, sales breakdown by customer, and I click on the pin visual icon. And uh, what I will do is uh, it asks you, next it asks you uh, to select an existing dashboard or create a new dashboard in order to pin this visual to so in this case, I had already created a dashboard. So I would just pin that um, this visual uh, into the sales summary dashboard that I created. So uh, if you haven't created a dashboard, you can simply uh, head into here and click on new dashboard and provide a dashboard name and just pin it as well. And it would create a new dashboard and pin it for you. So uh, in this case, I had uh, created a dashboard, so I don't want to uh, create a new dashboard yet again. So I would just use the existing dashboard and click on pin. Right. So uh, after pinning the specific visual, it uh, asks you, asks you the options. Uh, it just provides you a notification. Uh, it just disappeared away but it just provides you a notification saying that this particular visual is pinned and whether you want to navigate yourself uh, to that particular uh, dashboard or whether you want to create a mobile layout. So uh, let's not 
talk about uh, mobile layouts in this session. That's a whole new, a different way of thinking in terms of UI and how things should be doing. So uh, I would keep that aside probably for another session. But um, during this session, what I would do is I would just navigate myself to the uh, sales summary dashboard that I created and show you this particular visual that we append. So what we do is we literally do the same thing for the other visual that we want to pin it in, pin in and uh, we want to see in our dashboard as well. So that is sales breakdown by product. So I just uh, navigate hold myself once again to sales breakdown by product, click on the pin visual icon, and uh, once again, I would just select the existing dashboard and click on sales summary. So I, if I just navigate myself once again to uh, the sales summary report uh, dashboard, you should be able to see both my visuals in the dashboard right now, right? So that's really, that's very simple and straightforward. Uh, the important thing that you need to keep in mind here is that you cannot create visuals from scratch in Power BI dashboards. You can only refer visuals from your respective reports into your Power BI dashboard. So uh, that's what we just did, and uh, you can see the effect of that in this screen right now. And next thing I just want to uh, provide an appropriate title for this page so that it looks a bit more compelling. So uh, I would just click on. Uh, uh, so how I do that and also something important for you to know is that uh, when you click on each visual. From the Power BI da dashboard, when you click on each visual, you will be headed down to the respective report that the specific visual is referring to, right? So in this case, uh, so sales breakdown by customer. If I just click on this, it would just take me to the report where sales breakdown by customer came from. And uh, that is basically that. And uh, you can remember uh, in here, as you can see, there is no visual interactions. It's just a very static report. So uh, that's just a bit of that. that. Uh, and each of these are called tiles, right? Sorry about that. So if you just, each of these are called uh, tiles, right? Uh, what you were creating uh, dashboards are called tiles. So uh, these tiles represent a specific type of content, a specific content. Uh, in uh, that is being used uh, that is uh, existing in Power BI dashboard. So in this case, uh, this is just uh, sales breakdown by customer visual is referring to one tile and sales breakdown by product visual is referring to another style. So uh, if you just look at the options in each of these tiles, uh, so you can just pin this tile somewhere else as well. You can view insights of this or you can go to the report. Um, you can copy this by, you know, visual as an image. Uh, you can add comments. You can uh, uh, chat in teams about this as well, which is the team's co uh, collaboration. Uh, you can do an entire session about the team's collaboration. That's a whole new topic. So uh, that uh, Power BI have be, uh, had worked on uh, during this year, I guess, as far as I know. Um, so that's a really uh, nice thing to see, uh, have a uh, nice thing to know as well. So uh, yeah, that's that. And uh, also you can open your visual in focus mode, which means it would entirely show you a visual uh, in a specific focus mode and you can simply just filter out with the use of the filter, uh, you yeah, show with the use of the filter paints. For in the sense, uh, I just want to filter out, um, yeah, some less specific customers, and it would just uh, pop up in the screen with some interaction. But uh, keep in mind that this is in focus mode, and uh, you cannot do this interaction with the dashboard by default. So uh, 
if you exit focus mode, uh, it will just simply wipe away. As you can see in this screen right now, so that's a bit of that. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to add a tile uh, with a heading for this dashboard, so it looks a bit more compelling. So I will click on add a tile option. And in the add a tile option, what I want to do is add text, right? So to add text, what I want to do is click on the text box option, right? When I click on the text box, uh, all I need to do is click on the next option. And uh, what I need to provide is a respective name. Display it, uh, uh, respective name for my uh, uh, text box. So in this case, I would just call it uh, say summary. And it would appear, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I would get back to it once again, uh, text works next. And I would just uh, type out say a summary the way I want to see it. And um, I would uh, provide, sorry, uh, provide a, a better font size in this case. So I would provide around 30, 40, I guess. Yeah, that should be okay. And uh, maybe I would just make this a bit bold to make it look a bit compelling. And I would click on the apply option and that created my text, right? So it's right at the bottom. So how do you put this right into the top? All you need to do is just drag it and drop it right into the top. And you can adjust it as per your preference as well. And maybe I just want to center this as well. It just it doesn't look good. Mm, so I would go to edit details and just you can see the options that you can add a title for this text box as well. Uh, if it's required, so in this case it's not really required because uh, that's basically giving a title. Let me just show you that and see how that works. So basically. You can see the effect of that right behind the screen, right? So uh, this is a title. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a title. So this is not specifically essential for me, right? Uh, test title and test subtitle uh, because I just uh, in this case, why I don't want it is because I just want to make sure my uh, I want to edit my text. Why if you provide a title or subtitle, you specifically can't um, customize your text or provide make it bold or stuff like that. Uh, but if you provide it to the content, you can do that. So in this case, uh, I just don't want that uh, a subtitle and a title. So I would. Uh, so how how I change that is I just click on the ellipsis uh, saying more options right next to the text and I click on the edit details option and I would just simply this um, select the option to not to uh, display title and subtitle. Right, that's that and I just want to center this as well because it I think that looks better and it's centered out uh, that is that and uh, just want to make sure that it aligns well as well so that uh, there wouldn't be any problems here and align i just all you need to do to align is just drag and drop your visuals it's very simple um not overly complicated so uh it's uh, really simple uh, just click on the visual and just drag and drop wherever you want it to go and that's that and the next thing i want to do is i just want to uh, provide a title and subtitle uh, for these visuals because i think that's essential to visuals and these visuals so how you do that is just click on the ellipsis that i clicked previously uh, under each tile 
tile visual. So in this case, uh, the more options ellipses right under the under the sales breakdown by customer and click on the edit details option. And uh, I just want to make sure that I customize this particular uh, title and subtitle a bit. Uh, so you can see sales breakdown by customer is right in one text. So I just want to cut the option, cut that uh, the text by customer and just paste it over in right here uh, as a subtitle so that it looks a bit more clearer for the audience, uh, for whoever who is consuming this report. Um, that's that and that you can provide a URL to navigate when you click on the visual as well. I think as far as I know, uh, that's what it leads to from this. And uh, and you can also cast. Uh, yeah, so you can also provide the last refresh time for this visual so that it's a lot more clearer to the audience in terms of when was this last refresh and and so on. Um, so that's that for you and I just did that and uh, I will not be setting up a custom link here because I just uh, when you click on the visual because I want my business users or end users to get themselves into the report, right into their report when they click on a specific visual. So I don't want them to go anywhere else with the use of a uh, custom link. So I am not using that and I will click on apply. And let me do the same for this particular visual as well. And edit details by product. And display our last refresh time. And um, not going to set a custom link again. So once again, what the custom link does is, uh, so I, I think I showed you previously that when you click on a specific visual from the Power BI dashboard, it heads you right into the respective report that the dashboard uh, report that the specific visual is referring to, right? So uh, what you can do with a custom link is um, rather than uh, directing the user into the specific report, uh, you can direct the user anywhere else that you want the user to be directed. But in, in this case, I don't want to do that. So uh, I would not set a custom link and I would click on the apply option. Right, that concludes my dashboard. So uh, that's really it. And that's really simple as you can see in the screen right now. That heads into uh, the second topic of discussion for today, which is a topic that we'll be talking about today, which is the other expresses, right? Um, so workspaces are they used to share and collaborate the developed Power BI components with others. Uh, so others in the sense, this is specifically going to be your colleagues uh, who engage in various tasks with you. Uh, you are probably not going to share this with a third party. So uh, that's basically that. Basically, uh, Power BI workspaces are used for you to collaborate uh, with your colleagues and to work on specific tasks related to Power BI. Uh, it could be a data consumption task, a consumption task, or a, a de development task, or it could be anything as such. So that's that. And there are two types of workspaces. These are personal space workspaces, which are also known as my workspace, and you have the workspaces itself. So, um, the my workspace or the personal workspace is free and it is uh, it is similar to a personal sandbox or a work, work area for yourself, um, which means that uh, the outsiders or any other any of your colleagues or anyone else will not have access to that environment. It's just your personal environment for you to do development and just to publish into that and just to keep it. So in this case, if you are a Power BI business user, you are probably not going to see you have an empty personal workspace or an empty my workspace because uh, you are probably not going to do any development and you are not going to publish, right? So uh, that's a bit of that for you. And uh, also these Power BI workspaces are free. So simply, um, 
uh, Power BI and My Web Spaces are free. Um, so, which means the personal web spaces are free, which means that there is no any charge for it. So, if you are a Power BI pre free user, uh, you can simply just go into that. Um, you can simply publish your work into that and just play around with it. But still, there are a few restrictions, and uh, let's look at those re restrictions. Um, sorry about that. Let's look at those uh, restrictions right in the uh, demo itself. So uh, let's keep it to that. And uh, when it comes to workspaces itself, so uh, uh, compared to personal workspaces or my workspace, uh, uh, workspaces are not free, and you would at least need a Power BI Pro license. Uh, to access to consume or manage uh, workspaces with the use of sorry about that uh, and see, uh, uh, with the use of uh, uh, with uh, with the use of um, power bi uh, with the use of power bi manage workspaces with the use of power bi so um, and also something to keep in mind is that uh what the usual process that how things work is that uh power bi developers engage in their respective development and uh, they would uh provide a solution and they would publish that solution to a respective workspace to a respective workspace and um after publishing the solution to the respective workspace uh that would be consumed by the business users for their data driven decision making. Uh, so that's a bit of how that works. So let's quickly head ourselves into the demo and see how does that look and what you need to consider in that. So the first thing I would do is, even though it looks messy, let me just show you a bit of my personal workspace. So uh, how you access uh, my personal workspace is uh, the my workspace option you see right at the top of the screen, right? You simply click navigate yourself to workspaces and right at the top of the screen, you can see an option called my workspace. So uh, just click on that. And you should be able to see the uh, my workspace. Uh, you, you should be able to see my workspace in the screen right now. As you can see, it's a bit messy, so uh, uh, I don't even remember half of the things that I've done. You can see some of them are 2018, 2019, <laughs> and just a few of them in 2021. So, uh, so just n not going to a bit of detail in that, but this is just a bit of how my personal workspace looks like. And uh, in terms of restrictions, uh, you can see that I cannot create data flows with the use of Power BI, my personal or my workspace, right? That option is not available right here. Uh, that's a bit of that. Uh, and uh, all the other options seem to be available in uh, personal workspaces. I haven't, uh, the only key difference as a developer that I know, notice in the personal workspace with the development I engage in is just missing data flows. Uh, you don't have data flows in my workspace, so that's uh, uh, that's a bit of problem if you are someone who wants to do, if you are a free user, and if you want to do some R&D uh, around Power BI data flows. So that's just a bit of the personal workspace, and next I would just show you how to create this kind of a workspace, right? How to create a pro license workspace. So uh, I'm sorry, how to create a regular workspace, which is not a personal workspace. And also something to keep in mind is that personal workspace or my workspaces cannot be created in any way, right? It is uh, attached to your account, attached to your respective business account uh, by default, and it is only accessible for yourself. So uh, that's a bit of that. And let's quickly, let's uh, see how we can create a regular workspace 
which you can uh, provide access to other people and engage in collaboration with your respective colleagues, right? So let's quickly have a look at that. How do you do that? Yes, just click on the workspaces option once again, and you should see a big yellow color icon right on the top or right, right at the bottom of the screen called create a workspace. So click on the create, uh, create a workspace option. And all you need to do is provide a respective name for your workspace. In this case, I would provide my name as um, uh, uh, VI Training uh, Bangladesh Test. I would delete that immediately. So if you want, you can provide a um, description as well. In this case, I'm not going to go get into that level. So I would just click on save and you should be able to see my workspace. Uh, you should be directed and uh, you should see the created workspace. So since I have a pro license, I can create and manage this kind of a workspace by adding users as well. But if you are a free user, you don't have this privilege. Uh, so a free user can only play around, play around with the My Workspace option that I just showed you uh, previously. So I have my brand new workspace right here. And uh, what I want to do now is I just, uh, I would just, uh, I would just uh, uh, show you how to provide access to this kind of workspace, right? So how I do that is uh, I would just click on the access option. So uh, just to recap, I have just created a workspace right here ca calling that Power BI Training Bangladesh Test, which is a brand new works empty workspace. And I just want to make sure that I collaborate or I share this workspace with some of my colleagues so that um, they can engage in this workspace, they can do their development and they can publish it through here and oh, they can consume their reports as well. So um, their dashboards as well. So uh, let me just uh, provide access to just a few of them just to show you around. So in terms of access, um, there are uh, also uh, types of access here from admin to viewer. So what admin does is it provides full privilege to this kind of a workspace. And what Viva does is it just provides the option to uh, consume, consume reports uh, or consume the workspace in, in uh, if you say it the right way. So uh, it uh, th that's what the viewer option provides you and the member and the contributor option lies at uh, uh, lies in between. So uh, let me just uh, quickly see if I can uh, just provide you a detailed comparison of this uh, if, if you really want. So uh, if you just look at the Power BI access. So uh, this is that. So uh, this is the Power BI documentation, and this is just a very detailed view in terms of uh, what are the access privileges that each of the roles have. So in this case, uh, as I told, admin has all these privileges. All the, uh, as you can see, all ticks, which means <laughs> that they simply can do anything with the workspace and uh, the viewer can use to be used to consume the workspace, which is to, uh, as you can see right here, and the contributor and member lies in between. So we can have a detailed view of this uh, in the Power BI documentation, just Googling um, Power BI roles, um, and you should be uh, roles in new, uh, Power BI roles in workspaces and you should be able to see this documentation and get a detailed understanding of this. So due to the time limitation, I would not be taking you through each of this. So uh, yeah, you can just uh, get yourself into this and see what are the, the each and every privileges that uh, each and every ro roles have. Uh, so that's a bit of that. 
and I will close that right down and get back to my workspace. And I just want to make sure that I provide some uh, member access to one of my colleagues here. Uh, I'm sorry, I just want to provide an admin uh, sorry, viewer access to uh, one of my colleagues just to look at the reports here. So uh, I will just add that colleague here and basically uh, search his or her name and it should appear in the options that, that are under your company tenant and uh, this uh, organization tenant and just add the specific uh, colleague or the specific user and just click on add. And now this particular uh, colleague or this particular user has the read access to this particular workspace, right? So that's just a bit of that. And uh, just to, that's a, just a very basic and a high level view in terms of how you can manage a workspace, in terms of how you can create it and how you can work on it. And um, that should, uh, that's basically a very high level view of the workspace. So let's quickly head back into uh, my previous uh, workspace that I had engaged in all the development with. So that is this particular workspace that you see in the screen right now. So here uh, I would just show you a bit of bit around so you can see that there is, um, uh, the, uh, you can see the components, uh, the power reports in blue, uh, the dashboards in a lighter blue, I would say and uh, uh, the data flows in a yellow color icon, a gold color icon, I guess, and uh, the data model or the Power BI data set in the orange color icon. So you can, as I, I think I uh, told you um, uh, this to you guys previously as well. So if you create a Power BI data model in Power BI desktop and if you publish I'm sorry, if you publish it uh, right into your workspace, uh, a respective workspace, you can see a, a report created to this data model, respective data model as well, most of the time. Uh, so you, you will not need that. You will only need the Power BI data model, which is the, with the orange color icon. Uh, so you don't need this uh, report or the Power BI data model with the blue color icon. So I would just uh, click on the ellipsis that I see right in front of the data model report and I will just delete that. And you have the rest of the Power BI components right now. And uh, you can also uh, just filter out the respective components if you want. You can filter out the data set, you can filter out the report, you can filter out the data flow and you can filter out the dashboard. So that's just a bit of that. And also, uh, um, there are some premium features in this Power BI workspace as well. Unfortunately, I don't have premium to take through, the, through this process. Uh, one of such really exciting and really, uh, really effective, I would say, features would be the create pi create a pipeline feature. So what that feature does is basically uh, during the actual Power BI development. You have as with all the other developments, we have environments for we have a specific environment workspace for development and a specific workspace for production and a specific workspace for UAT or uh, QA, um, uh, UAT or QA. So uh, in that case, you don't have to publish your reports individually to each of those workspaces after development. By, by creating a pipeline, you can always uh, migrate whatever the changes that you do in development into UAT or production as per your preference. And you can engage with that with, with this create a pipeline option. Only problem is that uh, you would need the premium capacity to go ahead with that. And uh, you have, uh, you can see uh, the, uh, in Power BI, you can see some classifications of these components further as well. You can see content. So in content, you would see the dashboards and the reports. 
and they set data sets plus data flows to see the data uh, sets and data flows as you see in this uh, see screen right now. And um, if I look at the new option, you can see um, uh, you can create a various way. Uh, you can create various types of uh, components in Power BI for the components. So uh, one such component that we did not cover is paginated report which is pretty identical to SSRS reports if you had worked on them. The only thing is that you would need premium capacity once again to have a paginated report. So that's why I did not cover that uh, uh, because uh, uh, because it's not something that's possible, that's not accessible for all the users and it wouldn't provide, uh, it wouldn't provide the best for you if, even if I do cover that. So uh, I just left that out, but maybe in a future session uh, we can have a look at that as well. Uh, so the, another option is exciting and uh, another really nice uh, feature is the streaming data set. It has been there for a very long time and uh, it just uh, basically you can have streaming data sets in your uh, Power BI. Power BI workspace and you can have your respective reports in accordance to the streaming data sets. So uh, the streaming option is available as well. Once again, I did not cover that. I just used a very fixed data set so that you can understand the concepts and everything as well. So uh, that's just a bit of that and uh, in terms of Power BI. And uh, yeah, and if you just head back into the settings in the workspace, you can see the previous setting settings that I showed you. Uh, so uh, you, you, in this case, it's a pro license. So uh, premium per user is another possibility. Uh, so these are basically the licenses that you can have your workspace in this uh, workspace. With. Uh, by default, if you have a pro license, it's going to be a pro license. Uh, then you have the premium per user, premium per capacity, and embedded licenses. So uh, that's uh, that's just a bit of uh, to think about in terms of business requirements. And um, then you have actual connections in terms of. Uh, so what you can do in the here is, as far as I know, uh, with uh, whatever the workspaces that you create uh, the components of those workspaces are saved in an internal actual data lake as far as I know. So uh, what you can do in here is uh, I think you have the option to create into your own actual data lake and uh, just have your components there as well. So uh, that's that's basically an, <laughs> another level you will need to uh, get access to IT and uh, get yeah respective admin access and that's a different absolutely different process that uh, that is not that is beyond a very basic user so um, that's a bit of that and I think I just covered everything in the workspace and there is another option called the create an, uh, an app option so uh, what that would do is it could create a really nice app for you are end users to interact with. So that's a really, uh, uh, that's another possibility and maybe I, I would cover that with the recap session I would be doing after this uh, as an additional bonus. <laughs> so uh, that's a bit of that and that kind of concludes my session for today and I hope you guys got something out of this uh, session and um, I just tried my level best to um, uh, provide you guys with this. Uh, I just tried my level best to uh, provide you guys the best with the, the five training sessions I had with you guys. So I hope you guys got something out of it. So um, if you have any questions or if there is something that you want me, uh, if there is some kind of improvement that you want me to do, if there is something that you want me to talk about, more to talk about. So uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn and uh